it's said that travel is good for the soul. And it's this with our body and our thoughts that make us whole. The world's a big place, but today's so small, you can see it all in really no time at all. But in this life, there are things and people and places that aren't so kind. But leaving them behind for a while is good for the mind. It makes it quiet. And so I'll travel the world, but I'll always come home. And I'll bring back with me the things that inflame and entertain and inspire. And so, without further ado, this was my weekend with Krupskaya. <laughs> So it's about 10 in the morning. I am back at Stoke on Trent train station. From Stoke to Birmingham International, Birmingham International to Birmingham Airport, Birmingham Airport to Prague. Because uh, my best friend in the whole wide world, Mike Foxall, is doing his first ever world tour with his new band Krupskaya. We're so proud of him. We were in a band together from the age of 18 to our early 20s. The dream was always to tour and I'm so glad that he's been able to, you know, get to this point and I'm so happy that I'm able to support him along the way. It's going to be a great weekend. Uh, Alex, vocals, 15 years. Matt, bass, since 2012. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Uh, drums. 2005, but for a brief. What's the word when you fuck off for a bit? 15 years. So I'm in the Czech Republic. Um, the trip was surprisingly easy. Uh, I had no problem getting the train from Stoke to Birmingham. Then there's like a little monorail from Birmingham to the airport. Flew through security. Uh, met up with the guys from the band because by coincidence ended up on the same flight as them which was delayed for an hour um, the flight over it was uh, just under two hours and I slept for all of it I flew straight back through security um, then uh, my then getting from the airport to the hotel I'm staying in tonight uh, was like a 30 minute Uber which accounting for costs and you know exchange rates only cost about 30 quid which is not bad for what's effectively a transfer the hotel again only cost me about 30 quid to stay in it tonight and you can tell it only cost about 30 quid it's basic as the light in the toilet doesn't work but i'm here for one night and it's literally somewhere to get my head down uh it's in the middle of a gorgeous little town uh, it is red hot outside. I'm wearing my skinnies and I've got a feeling that I'm going to be wearing the one pair of shorts I bought for the entire weekend, all weekend, so I'm going to get changed soon. Um, I've just been to the local shop to pick up some cigarettes and some supplies. So I think these are like corn cracker breads. That's clearly cheese, you can tell by the mouse. And I think, I think that's a cheese spread. Um, so I'm going to have something to eat. There is a wicked little bar and grill just over the road. If you can see it. My cream cheese didn't taste right. So I ran it through Google Translate. It's some kind of dessert. Alex. Well, this guy was Lenin's wife. Lenin's wife was um, a very powerful lady in the communist revolution in Russia. Um, she was, uh, well, when Lenin died, she was persecuted by Stalin and ended up becoming a victim of the system that she helped to create. So that's why we call Krupskaya. Although in some countries, it's not such a good name. 
name. In Russia, for example, yes. <clears throat> so I've relented. Uh, the shorts are now on. Uh, I'm going to go across to the uh, bar and grill, hopefully in a friendly. Uh, I'm going to have a couple of beers. I'm going to head down to uh, the venue, which is a skate park that may or may not be just someone's backyard uh, for the first show of the weekend. Um, yeah, I'm planning on going very, very hard this weekend before I have to go home on Tuesday. It's about half past eight. It's still really, really warm here. Um, I'm just about to uh, head down to the venue. Uh, no idea what to expect till I get there. So I consider myself a little bit of a music show veteran. I've been going to them for a long time in all different places. Nothing has ever compared to this. This is like someone's shed that's been converted into the world's coolest fucking venue. And everyone's just kind of like hanging around in the garden, pissing up trees. Um, I've not been inside yet, but if, it's, if, if the atmosphere is good, it's out here next to the pissing tree. It's gonna be a right treat. So this is legitimately a little skate park in someone's shack. There's the art park behind us. It's the venue. Um, this is crazy shit. And here's Mike. Mike, it's your first world tour. How are you holding up so far? He's not doing well. So this is the stage right at the back of the venue. Um, a Serbian band has just finished. They weren't supposed to be on the bill. They showed up in Prague a week early. Serbians. But this is legitimately the most extreme and cool place I've ever been to in my entire life. This is the first day of the trip and I can already tell it's gonna be fucking crazy. We are Kruskaya from England! The song is called The Neo Platonic Age!
stage at Halle venue because of course I am. I go wherever the band goes. I may as well have press credentials around my neck. Uh, you, it's good Riley, you feeling good? He's feeling good, he's feeling good, he's feeling better than Mike is. Uh, when I bring shorts, I'm feeling alright. Yeah. So the DIY extreme metal scene is like no scene I've ever encountered. So we are at a venue which is basically a small skate ramp that someone has built in what looks like their backyard. There's a venue at the back, behind that is the fucking uh, the green room. Uh, the hosts have put on food for all the bands, They're just sitting there upstairs with a big fucking plate of fucking stuff. All the bands are selling their own merch. Everyone here has been friendly as fuck. It's kind of like this, this, this is like a proper grassroots movement. Crowds! shows I've ever seen in my life. These Czech motherfuckers do not mess about. They were getting fucking wild. I am exhausted. It's now midnight. There are two more bands on before this place calls it a night. Everyone's having a well-deserved beer. It's been a fucking great first day of the tour. adventure and last night I got that in abundance sort of the most hot insane loudy sweaty show we've ever been to in one of the coolest fucking venues I've ever seen in my life but this venue is in the middle of fucking nowhere and there was a very real possibility that I would not be able to get back from this venue 
And at one o'clock this morning, that venue, the, that possibility became a stark reality. However, I had planned for this eventuality. Um, the, the, hence why I booked this shit old hotel. It was the closest one to the venue. Closest being about seven miles away. Um, I, uh, I walked back uh, from Halle to the hotel. Much to Mike's dismay, he was like, you cannot walk back, you do not know where you go. Mate, I'll be fine. I've got Google Maps. Um, so I left it one-ish. Got back here well before three because I was able to have a shower and everything before I got in bed at three. It's now nine in the morning, by the way. I'm fucking hanging. So there was a lot of walking on pitch black country roads for miles and miles and miles. Anyway, before I knew it, I'm back by the hotel. And the ironic thing is, obviously, I've not seen a fucking soul for like an hour and a half. There must be a nightclub or something nearby, because as soon as I get back into the town at like half two in the morning, there are people fucking like st still like partying in the streets. But anyway, uh, I'm, uh, that, that, that kind of experience might have uh, defeated a lesser man, but made a stir of stuff. Now I've got through that, there's nothing else, there's nothing I can't get through this weekend. <laughs> Love, peace, tolerance, and the eradication of all of those things. <laughs> Yeah, smart like that. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say that I have severely underestimated this trip. Um, to get from where I am, Horovic, to Leveritz, I'm looking at least three hours this morning. Uh, luckily, it is only 10 a.m., um, so I've got I've, I've got the time to get to get to where I'm going. Uh, Still feeling confident, still feeling good. It's just, ugh, I didn't expect me fucking city break in Prague slash touring with a fucking band to turn into what is effectively a survival course. <laughs> so this morning's trip might not be as big a ball league as I predicted. I was able to get to the train station pretty easily. Uh, despite it was on a Sunday, there was a kiosk open and I could actually speak to someone, not that they could fucking speak English, but uh, between like, shouting, sign language and pointing at things on my phone, I've been able to uh, get the ticket and I believe I need. And I'm, I'm more or less on time as well, it's about half past 10. The train to keep me on schedule is at 20, is, is it 10 to 11. So, I should be in um, Leberitz by mid-afternoon, God willing. It's been at least 10. <laughs> um, I don't want to say we're a big deal. Um, I don't know, I mean, normally, I mean, normally there's between 30 and 50 people there. Sometimes the shows are big. I mean, when we went to, in Indonesia last time, there was quite a lot of people at a few of them. I think one of them had about 600 people at, but I mean, we're, we're a DIY band. The shows tend not to be, not to be very big. But small shows are much nicer. More personal. More personal and generally quite, generally crazy. You get to see the faces of everyone you're deafening. It's a bit more intimate. <laughs> it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, left the hotel this morning at 10. I'm now in Liberets which as you can see is a considerably more metropolitan part of uh, Czech. Uh, I think it's like the fifth biggest city in Czech. Um, so my hotel is around here somewhere, which is gonna be right next to the venue. I don't, be, I don't think it's far from where I am. I think there is a Mackey's nearby though, so I'm gonna get a fillet of fish or a veggie wrap before I go uh, any further because I need some something substantial on my stomach. I don't do great with heights, so uh, yeah. Bit of a uh, yeah, but I'm doing I'm doing this anyway. <laughs> so this is uh, Liberitz. This is the view from the top of my hotel. So I've just checked into the second hotel, and after the first hotel, I was expecting a you know 
quite a significant, significant improvement, but this goes above and beyond. I have a jacuzzi bath, being effectively a king size bed, big old TV, all the remotes I could ever ask for, snacks, and my own balcony. Now I had told myself I was gonna have a nap before I go out tonight. However, I cannot pass up the opportunity of the jacuzzi bath. So I may need to forego having a nap so I can soak in that before I go out because I don't think I'm gonna have time to do both. Woo! So it's brightened up slightly. And it means it's getting warmer. Which means I might need to get changed again. I just want it to cool down a bit so I can... can it's too warm. <laughs> But yeah, this is my balcony. This is the view from my balcony. Uh, Leverets. Uh, it's pretty nice. And somewhere down there is the venue. That I'll be watching my boys tonight. So tonight is the second show. Venue is over the road down there. How's it pronounced? Azil? Azil. Azil? Or Azil. Um, which has this really cool Shangri La esque forest <laughs> hangout opposite. Never been to Glastonbury. <laughs> right, lads, second day of the tour. How are we feeling? Second show. Pre gig. Yeah. Edit. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Met, met, met men of many words. I've always have been. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pair of us. <laughs> Probably been the worst two people to speak to, really. <laughs> <laughs> We're not on stage. The band likes to unwind with traditional Czech forest games. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go to Nando's? <laughs> so when I woke up feeling like shit yesterday morning, only to have to travel four hours across the country to get to uh, the next hotel, the next venue for the next show, I promised myself, especially after finding out how awesome my room was, that last night I was gonna take it easy, maybe come back early, and just, you know, have a chill. What actually happened was, there was a lock-in at the venue till past 2 a.m. where I was buying rounds of drinks for everybody because I don't think they've quite worked out, like, how <laughs> how cheap everything is over here. Um, it was, it was a fucking great night. Krupp's guy absolutely destroyed it. Um, they played with two bands from Normandy, both hardcore bands with both very beautiful female vocalists. Uh, they've invited me to travel with them. Um, so we're apparently we're all meeting up at the venue later on th from last night to collect all the gear. Then there's a, a day trip up a mountain and then we're going on to the next city uh, for the next show and I get to spend my time with the French. 
So tonight's supposed to be my last show. Because uh, the guys fly on to Indonesia and Malaysia tomorrow. I fly back to England. That's currently the plan. There is a possibility, ever so slightly, that I will not be going back to England tomorrow. So all the bands have reconvened at this Exil venue from last night. Uh, the French bands actually stayed here last night. Uh, Krupp's guy stayed with the motor up the road. Obviously I stayed in the hotel around the corner. Uh, we've all reconvened here uh, to move on to the next city. Uh, but before we do that, I believe we're giving a bit of sightseeing today, um, which is going to be awesome. And I get to spend some time with some really cool people. Come on tour, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Czech Republic, a lot of drinking, a lot of clubs. No one ever mentioned mountain climbing on the itinerary. Passer là, ça devient trop risqué pour moi là. Il faut redescendre, c'est escarpé. Là déjà, je suis pas très So this is exhausting, but it's so beautiful and picturesque. Uh, apparently these massive rock formations were formed millions of years ago when the oceans recited and it's created these two like, monolith formations uh, full of caves and everything. So uh, we're having a bit of an explore before we move on to the next venue. TJ Travis. I don't know. It's probably, I mean, it's, uh... it's probably not so much about appeal, but the fact that you've made the effort to make it happen to get there is probably yeah. something that hopefully from their perspective that people have actually made the effort to get to those places where not so many big tours go and not every DIY band would play and stuff like that I guess. What he said. So I've arrived in Padabradi, Padabradi, I don't speak the lingo. Uh, it's all been very plain sailing this trip so far but something was bound to go wrong. I've had it too easy and it went wrong today. We arrived in the town. Uh, my accommodation was less than 10 minutes away from the, uh, the venue. So I followed the map and ended up on an estate full of Soviet era high rise apartment buildings. As it turns out, where I was staying was the spare room of an old lady's flat. Nah, mate, I was not having any of that. So um, very politely snuck out, basically. As soon as I got in there, I realized what the crack was. Uh, I got straight on the internet. I found a hotel room, um, literally even closer to the venue. But uh, yeah, I've dropped on. Hotel's great. It's in a great location. So uh, the weekend will continue. So I've got like a fountain right outside my hotel. So I've dropped on considerably it's uh, much more picturesque than the fucking soviet block so after going for something to eat and a cocktail because that's what i do uh, i happened to coincidentally bump into the uh, the guys in the band as they were walking past so uh that was andy so we're at boss bar which is the final show on the czech leg of the krupp Sky tour and it will also be uh it will also be my final um show on the tour because 
if the uh, babushka lady in their apartments has taught me nothing, it's that I probably wouldn't be able to handle what they're going to have to go through in Malaysia and Indonesia. I'm going home, motherfucker. But it's going to be a great night. Um, I know that all three bands are going to be fantastic. And I am desperate for a drink that isn't 11% lager. <laughs> While you're uh, shredding it up across Eastern Europe, uh, Southeast Asia, yeah. how have you coped so far? Been alright, you know. I say one's a culture shock. Are you, are you expecting a culture shock when you go over there, though? Yeah, but I'm, I'm probably not as much as here. Because it's there, it's very quaint. It's just, you're hoping. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be manic. I know the gigs will be. Is anything you're worried about? Showering more than anything. Showering and having to wipe your hand or oh, move your hand. I've got baby wipes. <laughs> achievements or anything like that because they're all as valuable as the other ones and they can't really things can't happen without other things happening so if, if we hadn't toured in Europe and we hadn't played in when we first started then we probably wouldn't have been able to tour in Asia before we probably wouldn't have been able to do Russia so it's all of it just just the fact that we managed to get out of Stoke is probably the biggest achievement in and get more of a world view on on everything that's that that was it. That's the achievement. And that, as they say, is that. Uh, I've just left the guys at the venue. They're going straight on to the airport because they have a very early flight to catch. Um, they have uh, a few transfers uh, to end up in Jakarta uh, and they will begin a two-week leg of Southeast Asia which is amazing I have had the best weekend in Prague with them um, it's just been insanely good 
probably the best weekend of my entire life. And can you all do me one favour on the, on the rest of this trip? No. You look after Mike because like he's more precious to me than any of you could realise. <laughs> he looks gutted by that. <laughs> he is the nearest member of the band though, so... We haven't done the initiation ceremony yet. <laughs> <laughs>